Good morning. It's a bit, I was going to do this inside, but I re while I was sitting inside, because it was, I came out earlier and it was quite cold and chilly outside and put on a jumper and I thought, hmm, I think I'll do it inside. So I had everything prepared inside and then I was like, the sun came out. The beautiful sun came out. As you can see, it's shining over here onto my left. And uh, it's, it's another beautiful day, um, weekday here in New Zealand. It's Monday. If you're overseas in Northern Hemisphere, it's still Sunday for you. Um, so welcome to the live broadcast. I've got a lot of different things this morning. We'll talk about movies and some comic book movies and some um, some for kids and some classics. Yesterday I mentioned Oblix or the other day uh, and Asterix. Today we're going to talk a bit about uh, Tintin and and other stuff. So yeah, so there's a whole bunch of pile of DVDs I want to be talking about today, right? And uh, a few com um, hardcover comic books and graphic novels. Uh, talk about um, reference to um, you know their place and comics and and adaptations and stuff. So I just want to do a bit more different today. Well, not really different. I usually do the same thing. No, no, but just different things. So my name's Mel Function. Welcome to my um, live stream here in New Zealand. And you guys are watching me on commentary. Of course, you already know who I am. Across the world, if you're watching through um, YouTube, hello, how are you? All right, let's start off with um, 300 before we get into some um, comic book news. So 300, written by uh, Mark Miller with art um, by himself and and um, coloring up colors, yes, colors by um, Lynn Varley. I haven't had a look at this graphic novel for ages. Of course, there was, um, there was like single issues came out and then they put it as a hardcover in 1999. And as you know, Jared Butler toned himself up, spent three to six months getting all, uh, all jacked up to look like that. A lot of times people um, kind of go on about how, uh, you know, um, women have to look, you know, stay beautiful and look after themselves, makeup and all that, and, you know, keep exercising and stuff. But they don't really think about what the guys have to do, because otherwise they wouldn't get the jobs, right? Uh, you got to be, you know, if you're doing uh, specific movies like, um, you know, basically like uh, 300, you got to look like freaking um, the Hulk. You got to look like a um, a boxer, or you got to look like a, a wrestler to do some, you know, to do, to be in 300. So yeah, so Lynn Barley and Mark um, Frank Miller uh, wrote the, um, I think it was six issues or th maybe three issues. Of um, comic book series uh, released by Dark Horse. Uh, I'm one of the lucky ones. I um, I picked this up off trade me a couple years back. Um, I don't I don't remember how much it was, but it was quite cheap. But this is you know these hard covers. This is one of the first editions. And I don't think a lot of people actually look inside um, the graphic novels and such, or and you know trade paperbacks to find out when what edition they buy. So it's really quite important to actually go in when you're actually buying something especially if you're you know looking at trade me and something and you look at when it was released and you'll find out that actually if you you know find out you know do a bit of search you find it might be worth a bit so when this was first released there's about nine ten editions of this and of course when the movie came out people ran to get some more and so they had to print the hard covers so this is one harvey awards let me see where eisner's the great uh Will Eisner, I hope I saw it right, Will Eisner and Harvey Awards, yep, I, it's even written down, I don't know why I couldn't read it, I just think of Eisner, I never think of his first name, uh, one of the great comic book um, creators, and uh, American comic book creators, um, so he was married to Lynn Bali, his um, wife at the time, of course, married, and they separated, but the, before that they worked on this hardcover here called um, uh, Electra Lives Again and um, I'm always on the search for some um, you know some good books and this is way before I could actually you know uh, when I, this is when I could afford some stuff and I was able to buy this, this is a bit faded and yellowed all right as you can see um, hopefully you can see that it's uh, oh, Jesus just hold it over here yellowed and uh, had a few markings on it because it's it's quite an old book uh, the art style as you can see this classic Miller. Uh, Frank Miller has a really unique art style, like, um, what's his name? 
Mike Mignola. You can chase Mike Mignola up on um, Art of Mignola, I think it was on Instagram. You can see him doing a lot of, you know, work that he does. Of course, from help, help work, right? Uh, and he's got his unique style as well. So you can always recognize these two guys' art styles. And hopefully someday you'll be able to recognize my art style, but more specifically Seven's art style, because it's, the more artists I get involved with what we do at lunch, the less art I'm going to start doing, right? Um, so yeah, so yeah, Lynn Bali, uh, they put this out through Epic Comics, they're by themselves, I guess, not by themselves, uh, Epic Comics used to be a, um, a more mature line of comics before they had Marvel Knights and before they had Marvel Max, and um, so they put it, um, Marvel Comics, of course, Electro is part of that, and Deadpool, um, Daredevil, sorry, and there you go, and you, I pulled it out, so yeah, so of course, um, people talk about, you know, so, uh, Captain America being the first all-powerful super female superhero, but hey, Electra already had a movie out, you know, decades ago, just over a decade ago, I should say. Uh, and of course, she's, you know, villain. I mean, she's actually in that she was quite heroic, uh, but of course, she, you know. So anyway, Frank Miller was one of the guys that actually made. Um, uh, Daredevil actually stand out, right? Because Daredevil at that point, I think it was in the late 80s uh, or mid 80s, early 80s, was really not doing so well as a uh, the writers, whatever, they weren't really doing good stories. And he created Electra. And so Electra became a um, amazing um, storyline. And he basically, if you haven't read it, hopefully you'll read. It's been years, so you probably have read it. I mean, not read it, but you'll know the story. She dies, as of course, if you've watched Dead, um, Daredevil series on Netflix, uh, yeah, that story's in there as well. So you, 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 there's no excuse that you haven't watched it, um, that you don't know about that. So <laughs> apologize if you have, haven't. So yeah, so check this book out. It's really cool. Um, I think you can get it in digital. Uh, if you're able to get it from the library, it's worthwhile getting out. So, like I said, it's got some amazing, amazing artwork. It's just, I love art. I love Frank Miller's art. I have his three, um, his Sin City uh, comics, individual comics, as well as uh, one of the, I think it's the Hard Goodbye, and I'll talk about that some other time. All right, so that's Frank Miller, uh, 300. All right, and yeah, as I forgot to say, so I bought this for maybe about 30, 40, 30 bucks maybe. And that's the US price at the time, when it was released way back in 99, right? The value of this, I just checked it just to make sure that I knew what the value was at. In this condition, 135 US. It's gone up 100 bucks over, I guess, 20 years. No, yeah, 20 years, 21 odd years. Um, that's because, um, I guess it came and went, but, you know, um, and also not because it's, um, of that, but because the individual copies are worth more. They're kind of worth like about $30 each, $30, $40 each. But yeah, but the hardcover itself is actually, you know, worth quite a bit of money if you're able to get it. Um, the other thing, um, I didn't check um, this one. This one I think actually just came out as a hardcover. So I don't know what the deal with this was. I didn't look at that too much. I think I actually might have mentioned it sometime. All right, uh, let's move on to some kids stuff. All right, kids. I grew up Hergie's um, Tintin at Moreover Primary School. I spent, I found it was really easy to read. Of course, you guys know who Tintin is. Uh, and if you don't, it's worth checking out because of course, Owen oh, Peter Jackson made the live action. No, not live action, the CGI. Um, animated series, um, movie, right? Uh, I kind of keep, I don't think I've got that, but what I did find um, a couple weeks ago, months ago, or maybe last year, was an animated series, the, um, the movies. Um, yeah, so this is like about, the, each one of these have about, I think they're about half an hour, 20 minute shows, and they, each one of these have one, two, three, seven yeah seven episodes on them right 
I was able to pick them up for three dollars each, so I was quite excited. Uh, and I was quite, yeah, because it's it reminds me of my childhood, and it's uh, and it's something that helped me learn how to read, how to appreciate art, and really, it's this why I was um, emphasized about getting kids into uh, comic books because you know sometimes it's easier to read comic books than it is to read books, and because it's just words and words and words. But if you have, yeah. Hey Alex, yeah, um, Alex says I uh, loved Tintin as a kid, yeah, and I think, you know, there's so many of them, Herji just did, you know, look at, look at the amount of books he put out, you know, you can get collected ones now as well, so, you know, some of them, like, Explorers on the Moon, like, just came to my mind straight away, you know, some of them were just so amazing, and I think it's, uh, yeah, it's really, really worthwhile getting the, your kids if you have children, or if you have nephews, nieces, like I do, if you, you know, if they're having trouble reading, or, you know, hand them one of these books, because they're, they're quite colourful, right? That's a thing. It's quite colourful, and it's not so hard to read, because, you know, he's not trying to, he's not trying to make it difficult for children to read. He's make it, trying to make it enjoyable for children to read. And also, it's adventures. And that's the thing about this, the adventures of Tintin, right? Kids, when you, you want to go hunting for snails or whatever, or, you know, looking for flowers, you know, digging, you know, trying to dig in the dirt to find some precious stones. Yeah, uh, like I say, Prisons of the Sun was my favorite. And that would be, let me just bring it up. It should be on the back here somewhere if I can. Uh, mm, yep. That one right there, where are we? If you can see that, presence of the sun. Yeah. So yeah, so this was. There, they say that there's um, Tintin three and one adventures and seven volumes available as well. The making of Tintin four volumes, and man, there's just so many. Uh, there's about twenty two, right? The guide did twenty two of these, and. There's about 64, 62 pages. Now, in, in Europe, they don't release them as single issue comic books or floppies, as we call them here. They usually release them like about 45 pages or uh, 60 pages or 100 pages of albums. They call them albums. And um, so it's basically graphic novels, right? And so it's really cool. And it's hardcover, it's firm, so kids don't have to worry about it getting ripped or, you know, or getting dirty because you can just wipe the dirt off. You know, getting you know um, cr uh, crumbs on it, or worried about getting jam while they're eating or butter, whatever, or sandwiches on it. You can just wipe it off, and hey, it's gonna stay with them for a long time. And of course, you know, like Alex said, he still remembers him, loved him as a kid, right? Same as me, man. Um, you know, that's why I still have them. I still make sure if I see them, I'll get them. Okay, so let's talk about some um, sci-fi, um, some old, old movies to watch right now. When you've got nothing else to watch, you know, you're thinking of oh, what shall we do. And one of them is, I'm sorry that the, I have, didn't have time to get this off. I was just sitting, you know, I used to bring them home and just put it away. This is, um, let me get this cover out if I can get it out so you can see it properly. Oh, this is Legend. One of the very early fantasy uh, movies I saw. Uh, it's really it's um, by Ridley Scott, and uh, it's just a amazing, amazing tale. I'm talking about adventures and stuff, and uh, legend. You know, I was I didn't actually um, scout this out. Um, Jason did. So yeah, I saw this. My goodness, I've got to have this. So legend's got um, Tom Selleck in it. One of his Alien's roles. As you can see, and uh, and who is the other person in here? Let me just check, make sure I've got it ready. Tim Curry and Maya Sarah, and Anon Mitchin. Um, it's just it's such a great, great. It's a, it's, it's something you can watch with the kids, right? It's just a, such a great adventure. Like I was talking about, Tintin being adventures. This is a great, um, you know, great movie to watch with the kids. Legend, all right? So. That's how it's spelled, just, just in case you think it's spelled some other way, legend. 
sorry, it's backwards. But um, this ultimate collection that we were able to uh, scout out came with this little um, little booklet of just some um, artwork, uh, some photos of the characters, a um, bit of a background, and just, you know, just, yeah. It's just a, and a message from Ridley Scott, right? And uh, yeah, it's just cool. DVDs are really cool because um, having something there, you're not gonna worry about, um, you know, you can stream it, yeah, sure, you can stream it, but what if Netflix goes down? You pull out the DVDs. Okay, the other one, the other one, another favorite from my childhood, Labyrinth with David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly. Gotta make sure I remember that, it is Jennifer. It is Jennifer Connelly. All right, it's been a while. So yeah, David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly, one of his most iconic roles. Um, you know, you think, you know, if you don't, if you're not as old as me, and you think, oh, that, all, the, all I know about David Bowie is, uh, I think it's like uh, Spiders from Mars. No, that's not Spiders from Mars. I think it's, well, something about Mars, I can't remember. Uh, Major Tom, Major Tom, sorry. So, yeah, we were able to get us a deluxe edition. Um, two disc set. And, you know, it's it's Jim Hansen's. And if you remember, Jim, um, recently on um, Netflix, they had um, the Dark, Jim Hansen's The Dark Crystal. So, if you watched, um, there's a, you know, it was based on another movie. Of course, and this is the second part of that movie years later. I haven't seen it. I should get around to seeing it, but I've just been busy. Because movies like um, TV shows like that with um, Dark Crystal, I just want to be watching it. I can't be uh, because I, I multitask, so I can't be. Um... Oh, I think I've seen that. I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. So um, because I multitask, I um, I have a, my laptop screen here, um, DVDs playing and stuff, or um, sorry, you know, on. And then I have um, um, I have my big screen, uh, well, a big TV screen jacked up to it, where so I can keep working on my uh, on my comics and stuff, or my writing, or whatever I'm, you know, just artwork and stuff. Um, and the, so I kind of just listen to the words on the headphones, and just and every now and then look over, go see what's going on. If there's some you know something, uh, some action going on that I you know that I am not hearing what's going on. Um, so I, I um, sometimes you you gotta just sit down and watch a movie that and pull full attention to. So these, so, you know, so Legend and Labyrinth worthwhile watching with the kids. Um, Alex was saying that being from North Island, one of my favorite adventure movies as a kid was Hawk the Slayer. I think I've seen it because I in the eighties, nineties I was watching it ton of movie every day. All my money was getting spent like on uh, renting movies and also comic books, mainly in comic books and stuff and music, but also renting movies when I had the time. But I think when I started um, full on um, hanging out with my friends, I didn't get a chance to watch movies, but I always like get home and get pull a comic book out. But yeah, so that's, that's that one. Now, let's do some modern ones. Uh, so my, it's my favorite modern, um, modern ones. I mean, not everybody's gonna say, "Hey, that's you know, that's one of my favorite ones," but or that wasn't that great. But I'm gonna pull out some good ones um, that I think are good uh, for the with the kids still. Let's stick with the kids for a bit. Real Steel, All right? Um, father and Son Adventures Story, right? And if you know, you, if you're a Hugh Jackman fan like I am, and because he's Wolverine, right? He's the best man for the job, right? Um, you know, 12 and up, it says here. So, yeah, so Real Steel, um, into the not so distant future where boxing has gone high tech. 2000, um, 2000 pound, eight foot tall steel robots have taken over the ring. And that's your story, basically. Right, so it's really worth I'm sitting there with the kids and watching that. It's nice, really cool. It's really, um, you know, uh, Father and son, um, you know, um, and also mom and dad. Hey, it's a, it's a it's a universal story of, of bonding with children, you know, um, and it's especially you know if I remember right, a guy was kind of like on his on his um, 
struggling, right? And we're going to have a lot of, we're going to realize that a lot of families are going to be struggling after this. They say it's going to take about six months to about, I reckon about up to maybe two years for the country to, but maybe six months for the families to recover after this. So you need something, you know, to get some leadership skills in you now while you're sitting down going, it's going to, hard time's going to come, how am I going to, you know, how do I deal with it? And it's stuff like this, it's inspiration. It's just there for, you know, not something to say, well, that's how we did it, that's why I should do it. It's just something to get, pick up some little ideas here and there. Like I say, on last night's broadcast, it, I get, you know, I listen to every, I'm, uh, I like to listen to people tell me, you know, no, not like tell me stuff, but ask them more questions and hopefully get that onto me. And um, because it'll come in to use later on. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're we'll sticking with the sci-fi theme this morning. So next up is, of course, uh, Tron. This should be on if you want, if you've got a Disney Channel, you'll be able to stream this. Hopefully, uh, Tron. When I was a kid, um, one of my favorite toys, which I took to school and got stolen, right, was a Tommy Tron that my aunt gave me. It was one of my favorite toys. It was a per, um, it was a bird um, beige. Um, thing that you looked into like basically a virtual reality thing came out in the 80s right so you had the video game in your head and you put the bat three batteries in a size batteries on the top and you basically click left and right on here as this you know as the little machines flew um you know the ships flew and you do like duck past them man i miss that if i can find it somewhere i'll i'll, I'll buy that because i only had it for maybe about six months before it was stolen it was my favorite toys and i'll I really miss it. I had, a, I was kind of a show off when I was a kid. So, because most of my favorite toys came, um, you know, came from um, uh, my aunt and uncle who were actually quite rich, and we weren't so rich because we had three kids to feed, right? And so, uh, you know, we we got the average family. But um, parents provided, and we loved our parents, and we still, you know, were providing what we did at the time we were in the eighties, and but. We'd always wait for birthdays and uh, Christmases and Easter because we knew Aunt and Uncle would come around because they had the kids about the same size as us, age as me. And they would go and choose their presents. It wouldn't be Mum and Dad, or Auntie and Uncle would go choose it, but it would be, uh, would be the kids, um, you know, uh, Timothy and Tracy would choose it. And so I'd get, we, our, me and my sister and my little brother, he was too little at the time to understand, but uh, my sister, who's 10 years younger than me, we'd, we'd get really awesome presents. So we usually would be electronic stuff or really, really cool, the current, like the best things that was coming out at the time for our age, you know, 12 year old kids. And so I miss the Tommy Tron and I'm gonna, you know, I will find it someday. So yeah, to, um, this is the, this, the remake or the Legacy, to, um, Tron Legacy. And uh, yeah, good, good, um, good nostalgia film to sit down with. Watch the original as well with the kids because if you're a gamer, you know what it was like to be at the arcades way back in the 80s, right? Sit down with the kids and watch that. Um, so let me just make sure I've got all the kids one. Okay, I've done the kids movies to watch uh, during this time. All right, so all of them are basically an hour, hour and a half age and you could basically do what movie a day. So there's about what movies out of about three movies with kids there. Okay, so let's Let's move on to, um, let me see here, if I get this right. Two movies by Neil Bloomkamp from South Africa. This first one, District 9, right? Produced by um, Peter Jackson and Caroline Cunningham. And I think this is one of the classics, one of the sci-fi classics, District 9. And of course, it gave rise to, um, if I remember right here, where is he, where is he, where is he? Come on, starring. Wait. I can't see the name, who's starring it? Wow, okay, this is weird. It just says I'm um, presented by Neil Book, um, by um, Peter Jackson. I'm trying to really hard, trying to find out who stars in this. I know who stars in this. Uh, Shelto, uh, I think it's Shelto 
Shalto Copley. Man, I should have grabbed the Powers hardcover that I had. As you know, he was in Powers uh, as the cop, uh, former superpowered cop, uh, written by my, um, Brian Michael Bentis and artwork by uh, Michael Avon Iomi. Um, and I've, hopefully that's on streaming for you guys. I haven't checked myself, but Powers, I really like Powers. I thought it was really doing, it was really, really good before Netflix took over and did their own thing. But I think Powers was a really good show. Really, um, yeah, really awesome series. But I still can't figure out why. Um, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> Elysium, right? And District 9. So, of course, Elysium stars uh, um, the very good Matt Damon and Jodie Foster. And, uh, you know, it's talking about the very privileged living in the sky and very poor living on the ground. Just had a thought. Alita Battle Angel. If you've seen this, and if you've seen Alita Battle Angel, then you know that it's very much this storyline. But of course, it's not the only one, right? It's just a genre. Right? So there's many stories like that. But yeah, really, really cool. Both of them are really good classic movies to watch right now. Or anytime, really. But Hey, okay, I'm a huge fan of um, Kate Beckinsale. I'm just, you know, total love it. I think she's amazing, and and she's great in Underworld. If you've seen Underworld, then you know, then you know, uh, Kate Beckinsale, just amazing. And if I, I'm not sure if she was in, you guys probably will be able to tell me if you can comment if she was in uh, the Umbrella. Uh, Foundation, uh, Resident Evil. Was she in Resident Evil? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, she's amazing in Underworld. And she, and while we're talking about uh, Kate Beckinsale, she was in a movie made in New Zealand called um, Whiteout, uh, written by Greg Rucker, who's a comic book writer, and the book um, Whiteout. Uh, his, his comic book, which is based on his comic book, uh, Wide Out, the movie. So check that out if you're able to as well. So that's Kate Beckinsale. So Colin Farrell, loved him as Bullseye. Um, and uh, and also, uh, I think I was in, was he in Bullseye? And um, was it a Tom Jane Punisher or was it the, what's the, the other one? War Journal. I can't remember, but I've got them both. I can't remember which one is it. So, yeah, this is um, Total Recall, and uh, it's the kind of like the remake version of the Arnie movie, uh, based on, um, if I remember right, Philip K. Dick. Where are we? I think it's um, the, the short story is based on as we can remember for you wholesale, and Philip K. Dick, as um, I've probably already mentioned, is one of my favorite sci-fi writers. Okay, so you can watch the only one, and then come and watch this one, right? So you got that. Okay, and let me just say who's let's check who's this directed by. Len Wiseman, classic director. Okay, can't choose which ones to talk about now first. Okay, great suit. Um, brown, brown. Brown suits? Brown? I can't remember. Anyway, um, my brain's just gone. Let me. I'm gonna have to read this. I'm just sorry, guys. Um, Firefly. <laughs> sorry, Firefly. Right. So Firefly. If, uh, in New Zealand, used to, in, the, in 2000, used to be on at about 11 o'clock at night. And um, and if you missed it, an episode, that was it. Um, and then, you know, there was a, um, there was like, it just got, one season was gone. And every, there was a huge, huge following 
because it just you know because it was on late wasn't advertised much of course you know and it came and it went and there was a huge uproar saying hey why did you cancel it and everybody was up in arm petitions and all that this is just as internet was coming on you know main uh, you know youtube was happening it wasn't really you know it was really in the very early days of youtube so but you could still get people together to uh, you know get onto facebook and start talking about uh, getting a petition together so they did a petition and of course they were able to do serenity right and that's from the creator buffy and angel and um and i've actually binge watched both of those buffy and angel and i read most of the um, comic books as well and it's just a real really fun fun shows both of them and this is just as fun right um the movie serenity based off five flight is really good you've probably already seen it but we're in lockdown so it's worthwhile just revisiting the good old stuff right good old sci-fis and summer glow man summer glow is amazing in this you just you know best one you know i can kill you with my mind <laughs> the ultimate superpower right i can just do it in my head and um yeah i just thought maybe that's why um zap i've got zap and uh right now if you're reading um in critical uh, maybe that's where my recall is with what zap might have you know because think about it, why zap is able to do what he's able to do with mine maybe that's why i just sort of created a character zap uh his power has to do with his with his brain uh and what he can do with his brain it's not kind of like professor x or anything like that uh but um it's slightly different and um yeah so if you're reading you know if you're reading critical go check it out um if you're following okay last and not least if i remember right yep last and not least for for something is slightly bit different donnie darko if you haven't seen donnie darko and you're into genre films what are you doing get over it and watch it find you know get get around and get it and watch it amazing uh jake jenner whole movie before i think he was uh, spider-man and it's just um the storyline is okay october 1988 and small town usa is about to witness the end of the world <laughs> we're here didn't i didn't even think about this because it's been like i've watched it maybe 2005 2004 so i didn't even think it miller jokovic so thank you um alex i forgot to see the bottom there thank you miller jokovic and resident evil and isn't miller awesome i mean there's a whole trial of sci-fi movies that miller's been on ultraviolet check that out i remember right miller's on that check that out of course um fifth element brilliant uh, with Bruce Willis, I remember right. But Ultraviolet is about vampires. One of the older movies. Cheers, Alex. Thanks for helping me out, man. Uh, you have a great day, and you stay safe too, bud. Um, yeah. So, okay. So October 1988, and Small Town USA is about to witness the end of the world. It's home to Donnie Darko, a brilliant but troubled teenager, uh, plagued by terrifying visions which he alone knows the meaning of. With his classmate and soulmate Gretchen and a mysterious ex-teacher nicknamed Grandpa Death, he must unravel the strange occurrences affecting his school, his home, and his life before a horrifying specter known only as Frank leads Donnie to the edge of his sanity. This is a really, really, really fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, movie to watch. And Patrick Swayze, Drew Barrymore, Jake Gyllenhaal, Catherine Ross, Mary McDonald, 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 yeah, Mary McDonald. So yeah, that's me for today, guys. Uh